Margaretha Gertrida Zell, better known as Mata Hari, born August 7, 1876, was a Dutch exotic dancer charged with espionage, which eventually led to her being put to death by firing squad during World War I. Her life has been the target of the curiosity of biographers, novelists, and filmmakers at different times. Throughout time, Mata Hari became kind of a symbol of female boldness. Mata Hari, her stage name, is a Malay word meaning sun, but literally translated means eye of the day. Early life details of Mata Hari are more heartbreaking than glamorous. Born Margaretha Gertrida Zell on August 7, 1876, in Leeuwarden, Netherlands, Mata Hari was noted for her dark hair and eyes, unusual among her Dutch peers. She was also known for being sociable and bright. Hari's father, a hat shop owner, was relatively wealthy and loved for his daughter. Her luck soon changed, however. Her father went bankrupt, her parents divorced, and her mother died when she was in her early teens. Her father married again and sent Hari and her siblings to live with other relatives. After being kicked out of school for having an affair with the principal, Hari fled to live with her uncle in The Hague. Hari was only 16 when the alleged affair took place, so historians believe she may have been sexually abused. At 18, she replied to a Lonely Hearts ad written by 39-year-old Dutch soldier Rudolf McLeod. The two married in 1895. She became Margaretha Gertrida McLeod, and the couple relocated to the Indonesian island of Hava, formerly the Dutch East Indies. The union was not a happy one. McLeod was a frequent drinker and had a mistress, neither of which seemed to sit well with his new wife. However, at this time, Harry also began to delve into Indonesian culture, which would be useful later on. The couple had two children, both of whom fell very ill in 1899. Their son died that year at the age of two, but their daughter survived. The boy's cause of death is commonly believed to have been congenial syphilis, contracted from his parents. Yet other sources claim that he died after a disgruntled babysitter deliberately poisoned both children. Following the tragic death, McLeod left the army and the couple returned to the Netherlands, where they split up. They officially divorced in 1902. The couple's daughter stayed mainly with her mother at first, but Hari struggled to find work, as there were few jobs available for women. With no means to support her child, Hari made a difficult decision. She turned her daughter over to her ex-husband and moved to Paris. In 1903, Hari first arrived in Paris. While she was grateful to have a fresh start, she missed her daughter and was still struggling to earn money. From piano lessons to teaching German, Hari attempted to survive as best she could. In 1904, in a personal letter, she revealed that she had taken up prostitution to support herself. She also worked as an artist model for painters. A friend then suggested working as a dancer, a career that would change her life. By 1905, she was not only finding success in her new occupation, but also making some new personas for herself, stating that she was a Hindu artist the daughter of an Indian temple dancer, or Hava-born European, she took the stage name Matahari, which means Eye of the Day in Malay. She drew large crowds for her provocative sacred dance, which was basically just a striptease. After her debut at Paris Musée Guimet, the name Matahari would be known throughout Europe. She was a true sensation. Apart from her seductive performance, she also enjoyed the rare benefit of educating her audience about a different culture and way of life. Both she and her audience thus had a respectable reason to be on the show. Men from all over the world lusted after her, but Matahari primarily kept an eye out for military officers, a preference that would later get her into serious trouble after Europe died into World War I. Matahari's connection to World War I Because the Netherlands were neutral in World War I, Matahari had no problem crossing national borders. And so she did it often, which is why she popped up on a watch list for French and British intelligence. Exactly what happened next is up to who is telling the story. Whether Matahari was really a lethal spy for the Germans, or the French, or which country she agreed to help first, and for what reasons, is still unknown. One side of the story states that around 1914, 
Hari had personal possessions, including furs, seized in Germany. Reportedly, she returned to the Netherlands soon after. And in 1915 or 1916, the Germans came to her about going back to France to work as a spy, offering her 50,000 francs to do so. They seemingly thought she would be valuable to them due to her many romantic liaisons with soldiers. Though she accepted the money, later she claimed that she did so only to get back what the Germans had taken from her and did not intend to engage in serious spying. Nevertheless, she did make two trips to France in 1915 and 1916, during which she fell in love with a Russian officer. In 1916, she allegedly accepted an offer from the French counterintelligence chief to spy on his country for 1 million francs. She would later state that this was only so that she could retire from her former life and settle down with the man she really loved. But this decision would eventually mean her disgrace, as she was soon caught working as a double agent. The other version, however, claims that she took a lucrative offer from the French to spy first, again, due to her romantic ties to soldiers. In this story, she is falsely labeled as a German spy after a failed attempt to extract information from a German attaché. With all that said, chances are she simply accepted money from one or both sides just to support herself and her lover. Still, even if she never accepted a single espionage mission, this dubious connection to different intelligence programs would lead to her downfall. The arrest and trial for espionage in 1916, as the ship she was on board entered the English port of Falmouth, the police arrested her, suspecting her to be a different spy. Though she was eventually released, things quickly began to take a turn for the worse from then on. In January 1917, a German embassy official in Madrid forwarded a coded message to Berlin outlining the activities of a German spy named H-21. The French intercepted this message and identified H-21 as Matahari. Yet many believe that German intelligence was aware that this code had already been deciphered. To put it another way, they were setting up Hari for the fall. Then, sometime in February, she was arrested in a Paris hotel room and promptly dumped into a rat-infested cell. Matahari's trial, to be held in a military court, was scheduled for July. The charges included spying for the Germans and causing the death of about 50,000 soldiers. During testimony, Matahari acknowledged that she had accepted money from a German to spy on France, but claimed that she did not do the action he asked for. She claimed that she only provided trivial and meaningless intelligence to prove her loyalty to her adopted country France. If anything, she added that she had considered paying cash for her previously seized property. However, the French did not believe she was innocent. The military court held deliberations for only 45 minutes before finding her guilty, which led to her being sentenced to death. Matahari could only plead her innocence to the Dutch ambassador in Paris. My international connections are down to my work as a dancer, nothing else. For I really didn't spy. It's appalling that I can't defend myself. Whether Matahari was guilty or innocent, her fate was sealed. She would be executed by a firing squad on October 15, 1917. As with her life, the details of her death are bogged down in mystery and legend. Some people say that she sent a kiss to the firing squad before they started shooting. Others report that she refused a blindfold and bravely looked her executioners in the eye. This eyewitness account is perhaps the most credible. She showed unprecedented courage with a faint smile on her lips, as in the days of her great success on the stage. No one arrived to claim her body. For nearly 100 years after her death, Matahari has been portrayed as the ultimate femme fatale who lashed out at unsuspecting soldiers. She also became a minor league figure in pop culture, especially after she was portrayed by Greta Garbo in the 1931 film Matahari. However, apart from the well-known espionage legend, that recently released documents about Hari tried to paint a fuller picture of her life, and it is a sad one. Not only was Hari abused and neglected by many people, but she may also well have been used as a scapegoat or pawn during her trial, maybe due to her controversial profession and reputation. On top of that, France or Germany, or both, may also have been furious with her for not having generated useful information. In addition, France may have wanted someone to blame for the problems they were facing during the war, but unfortunately, the whole truth underlying the legend likely died with Hari. Up to today, 
Historians still discuss whether Matahari was in fact a double agent or even a spy. As each account of her story becomes more complicated than the last, it appears that she may have been, if anything, a victim of sexual politics. She was, after all, not a chaste and selfless woman, so it is no wonder why she was untrustworthy.